Now you're going to write methods that might throw exceptions, so we need to be able to handle those exceptions within our unit tests. The way we do that is we can use a try catch just like we normally would, and this is good when there's no exceptions that could be thrown or when many different exceptions could be thrown. We also have what's called an expected exception. This is good when we have a single type of exception that we know is going to be coming back from that method. So we specify the type of that exception in an attribute. And we're going to take a look at both of these different ways to test. Let's start out by taking a look at exception handling using a try catch. We're going to be now putting code into the file name null or empty using try catch should throw argument exception. So notice the arrange, it's a little bit different. I'm not instantiating the file process class in there because theoretically that could cause an exception because I'm instantiating a new object. So I've moved that instantiation down within the try block. I'm setting the string file name equal to string.empty because I do want to now test to make sure that I'm going to get an argument null exception thrown. So down here on line 50, we do from call equals fp.file exists on that empty file name. That, as we know, is going to throw an argument null exception, which we are going to catch. So down here, we're going to do on line 59, assert dot is false from call. Notice that I declared from call and initialized it to a false. So this test was then a success. However, if the file exists, you passed a valid file name in for some reason, then it's going to fall right through to line 53, where we do the assert.fail, and then we're going to pass in our own error message explaining exactly why this test has failed. It's because the call to the file exists method did not throw an argument null exception, and it should have. Let's go ahead and run this. And now you can see that. We now have three tests that are passing. But if we were to fill in something here, and we were to run this again, now you'll notice the red X, which says, hey, this one failed. And if we come down here to the test detail summary, you can see the message is that message that we passed to the assert.fail.